So a YouTube viewer wrote in and said, Bob, could you do a video about pipe thread sealants? And that's what this video is about. Coming up. Hey, welcome folks. It's Bob here from bobsplumbingvideos.com. And in this video, I want to address the concerns of a YouTube viewer who wrote in and asked me, could you do a video on pipe thread sealant? I initially thought that was a little boring, but I did a little research on YouTube and there are people asking the question. So I thought I would shoot the video. I just briefly want to talk about threads, uh, pipe threads versus machine threads. So I'm going to bring up the machine thread first, which is something you would see on a typical bolt. This is a piece of threaded rod and they are milled absolutely straight. So you can run this nut up from one end to the other or run the rod up from one end to the other, you know, uninterrupted and that's way the way that that's the way it's designed it's just milled straight so you can run a nut up you know and tighten whatever you're tightening or if this is a bolt you can continue to screw the bolt in and tighten whatever you're going to tighten and that's the way they're made by design unlike pipe threads pipe threads by design are tapered and they're tapered for a reason because as you screw them into a fitting they are designed to get tighter so that the farther in you go, the tighter they get. And in a perfect world, um, you know, the tighter it gets, you know, once you get to the point where it's tight enough, it shouldn't leak. But even in a, in a perfect world with a perfect set of cutting dies, and just for a second, let me bring this die up. This is how threads are made. This is through use of a, a cutting head. You'll have a handle, and in there you can see four sets of cutting dies. And for instance, you would put a plain piece of pipe in here, and you would start to, either by hand or through use of a machine, pipe cutting machine, these, these threads would be made and, and by design, they are tapered. So when you're, when you're finished threading everything, when the machine is finished and you take this die head off, you end up with a tapered head. And even with a very sharp set of cutting dies and the proper amount of oiling, you would think you would have a perfect thread. And, and if you're working with a new fitting and you screw this all the way in, in theory, this shouldn't leak and you shouldn't have to use anything. But in reality, there are microscopic little imperfections in the threads, could be in the fitting, could be in the threads, could be in both. And to give you a little better understanding, I'm just going to jump, jump into a screen cast just very briefly and show you a close up of what I'm talking about. This way you'll have a better idea. And then after you, 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 you take note of the screencast, we're going to jump back on the bench and I'll, I'll give you my take on pipe thread sealing. So uh, stand tight and check out this little screencast. And yeah, uh, I will be right back. Okay, take a look at the screenshot here. And in a perfect world with a perfect set of cutting dies and brand new pipe, once you made your threads, you would think that they wouldn't leak without the use of, of thread sealants. But if you magnify a cross section of male and female threads, this is actually what you would see. Now, I overly exaggerated the space in between the, the threads there and between the joints. But the fact is there are little, little tiny inconsistencies. And in, in addition to lubrication, the pipe joint compound, thread sealants, Teflon type will fill in all those inconsistencies and it will keep the liquid from leaking out. Now I use different methods for different situations. In my everyday situation, I will use Teflon tape in, in combination with a threaded pipe sealant. Um, a lot of guys will use one or the other. If I have problem threads, I'm going to use one method. If I have new pipe, I'll use another method. So let's get down to the bench and I'll explain to you further, you know, what I use and, and, and the situations I'm faced with and, and why I use certain pipe threads and Teflon tape and plumber's wick, etc. So let's uh, get down to the bench and uh, investigate this further. All right, now that you have a little better understanding about the little inconsistencies in threads, let me uh, give you my take on pipe joint compounds. Now, when I started way back in the good old days, I started, you know, in the 60s with my dad. And there was a product made by Hercules 
and, and most of these products you see here on the bench are made by Hercules. But it was called Pro Dope. And Pro Dope was basically, it was like a gray colored uh, pipe joint compound. It was just a lubricant, basically. And what we used back in the day was before Teflon tape is, is, is lampwick. This is just threaded lampwick. And what we would do is we would take our pipe and we would actually take our lamp wick and we would wind this cotton based string, if you will, or thread in between the, the grooves on the threads here and get it in between and we go from one end to the other. And we would follow that up with our pro dope, as it were, pipe joint compound on the male threads. And then we would proceed to, to, to screw it into, into our fitting. Now, we would go in there, and the question comes up a lot is, you know, how tight do you make it? You know, the, the tight is actually accomplished by your feel and your experience over the years. You know, you can't uh, continue to go. I know a lot of novice people who don't know when to stop will keep going. And that's not a good thing because on brass fittings, such as you're looking at here in my hand, I mean, you can you can continue to go if you're a big, strong guy or a strong gal, and you will actually get this nipple here to, to go in, you know, all the way and bury all the threads. But what you'll actually be doing is actually stretching this fitting out, which is not a good thing, and, and, and you'll never get it to seal. That's a little more difficult to do with... Um, with um, with black pipe, brass is brass is just uh, softer. So this is lampwick, and this is what I use predominantly. It was always lampwick and pro dope, lampwick and pro dope. You know, we're doing water pipes, lampwick and pro dope. Now on gas, we would only use the pro dope. We wouldn't use the lampwick, uh, and it lubricated. It did the job great, and uh, that's just the way it happened and 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 as we moved forward and things evolved pipe thread ceilings sealants got a little more sophisticated and enter teflon tape and you know what that is teflon tape is you know, simply teflon and this here blue one here is the one you would find mostly in the big box stores it's very thin not not you know it's not a heavy density unlike this tape here which is made uh, by Hercules. This is called Mega Tape, and this is much more denser, much thicker. It's got a lot more Teflon content in it. So the theory is you would have to use less of it. Um, this particular roll happens to be three quarter. This particular roll happens to be half inch. I use half inch Teflon when I do use Teflon, and you know my method for using Teflon simply is real quickly is I'm going to wrap it and you want to go in a clockwise direction. And I like to keep my Teflon toward the outer end. Just about there. I know a lot of guys like to wrap it all the way up. I, I just, I don't want to see it once it gets into the fitting. I like to lose the Teflon, at least visually, once it gets in the fitting, it makes it a much more neater job. So how many rounds, you know, that depends on the condition of the pipe. Newer pipe, I'll use less. Older pipe, I'll use more. Um, you know, th there's varying uh, opinions on how much tape you should use. Uh, you know, my opinion is it, it's, it's based on the job situation. And I will tell you that in my everyday plumbing practice, I will use Teflon. Teflon tape in combination with a pipe thread sealant called Megalock. And that's right here. Now, this is a PTFT thread sealant, which just means it's that there is Teflon impregnated into it. And what I'll do is I will put my Teflon on there. And I will follow it up with a, with a light little with a light little coating of my mega lock, and I am gonna proceed to screw that in to my fitting. I'm gonna get my wrenches. That's gonna make up 
and I'm going to have a nice joint. Now, a lot of guys say, oh, you don't need to use both. Some guys only use one. Some guys only use the other. You know, everybody has their own style, and, and I get that. that that's great. Um, you know, the number one reason in my mind to use the pipe thread sealant is for the lubricating factor. And then, you know, because you have this Teflon that's impregnated into the Megalock, it actually will fill up all those inconsistencies in those threads. And let me just briefly bring up another product. Let me put these down and I'm going to show you another product made by Hercules. This is called Real Tough, another PPTFE um, thread pipe sealant. And, and, and this is good. Uh, uh, you know, it works very well. But I find that it, it's not as easy to clean up as the as the Mega Lock. So same thing. You would put your Teflon on, followed by some uh, real tough here, and you know as you screw that into the pipe, you're going to see that um, you know you you could end up with some extra on here. And I always come by after I'm done with a joint, and I'm going to wipe my joints with a rag. I absolutely polish them, if you will. I polish them with a rag. I don't want them to look sloppy. I don't want them to look like you're looking at right here. See, some guys will just make up their pipe and, th and they'll leave it like that. And that looks horrible. Another thing I wanted to mention is this. When you apply pipe thread um, compound or thread sealant, if it were, you always put it on the male threads. Always put it on the male threads. Please do not put it inside the fitting because if you put it inside the fitting as you drive the pipe into the fitting that's going to work its way into the fitting now let me demonstrate here i have it on the male thread and i don't know if you can see but as it goes in as this goes in it's going to actually push it out and i don't know if you can see that it, it almost forms like a it can form like a gasket. So it's actually pushing out, which is good because the pipe's going in and it's working its way out. If you put it on the female end and you screw the pipe in, that stuff ends up inside the pipe. And what ends up happening there is once you turn the water on, it gets distributed throughout the water distribution system, ends up in the faucet aerators, ends up in your faucets, ends up in the shower bodies, ends up in the shower heads, and could cause a problem. Now, Normally, I'm going to use my Mega Lock. This is what I'll use on a daily basis. Or if you prefer, you can use your Real Tough. Uh, they both work equally fine. I find the Mega Lock cleans up much more easily. But if I have a problem joint, meaning I have old pipe or I have old fittings that are kind of stretched out, or I have fittings that are nicked inside, or uh, for instance, when I'm replacing a radiator spud inside of a freestanding cast iron radiator, I'm not going to use my Mega Lock. I'm going to use my Teflon tape, but I'm going to use a product called, let me bring this up here. I got to be very careful with this because this stuff is a mess. It's called Blue Block. Now, this Blue Block is a product that literally it'll form a gasket it doesn't dry completely hard but it'll 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 dry semi hard and it gets into all the nooks and crannies and inconsistencies of those threads and this will absolutely stop any liquid from from working its way through or or gas i use this on gas too actually i use this on gas um exclusively if i'm doing gas pipe i'm using my blue block blue block is the choice i use when i'm using when i'm doing gas work now, a lot of guys will use the mega lock there's nothing that says you can't use the mega lock on gas but i don't want problems especially on gas i don't fool around blue block is going to be my preferred product again i don't use teflon on gas pipe we're not allowed to do that here in new york city but if i'm working with water pipe I'm absolutely going to follow my Teflon tape with my blue block if I'm dealing with old fittings. Um, 
you know, most times I'm using a new piece of pipe or a new nipple, but a lot of times the fittings are already in there. I can't change the fittings. So when I have the stretched out fittings, worn fittings, it's going to be Teflon and blue block. New pipe work, no problem. Teflon, my mega lock, or you're real tough. And it's not, it's not a problem at all. So folks, pretty much, I mean, I, I think, I, I hope I've answered all your questions. It's thread sealant, pipe joint compound, pipe dope, call it what you will. It's designed to A, lubricate, and B, fill in the little microscopic inconsistencies in the threads and inside the fittings that you really can't see by eye, and therefore sealing in the liquid. Because you're dealing with water pipe, you're dealing with high pressure, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 pounds of pressure. And, you know, although you won't get, uh, you know, a huge leak if you don't use pipe joint compound, you will see the water etching its way through and, and, and working its way through. And to eliminate that, you use pipe joint compound or both uh, in combination with Teflon, as I do on my everyday work. Again, on my everyday work, I'm using, I use you know, this, this, this lightweight Teflon, two, three, four, five rounds. Again, that's going to depend on the condition of the pipe, followed by my mega lock. They're going to go into the fitting. And then as you can see, see, as you screw into the fitting, you're going to have kind of like that nice seal on there. And if you're using the blue block, that's going to dry semi hard and that's going to create a bulletproof, uh, a bulletproof joint for you. Again, please don't, don't put pipe joint compound inside the fitting. Because if you do, when you screw your, your pipe in, you're going to push it into the fitting. Then when you turn the water on, uh, you're going to clog up shower heads. You're going to clog up aerators. And, uh, you know, you're going to end up calling the plumber, which you don't want to do because uh, he's probably going to charge you uh, quite a bit to go around and clean everything out. So there you go, folks. So if you have any questions on pipe thread sealants, you know, shoot them to me in the comments. Uh, I would highly recommend you subscribe to the channel. Uh, I know a lot of guys, by the way, who still use, uh, they still use the lampwick. There are a lot of old timers out there and I would consider myself an old timer, but I, you know, unless I have a problem joint, again, if it's a real problem joint, I'll use this lampwick in combination with my blue block. If I have a real problem joint. Um, but a lot of guys today still use this. They don't, they don't want to use Teflon. They just refuse to use Teflon. They don't just, they don't believe in it. I'm not using Teflon. I always use my Lampwick and a lot of guys still use the pro dope and the pro dope, you know, it's still out there. It's still available today. I think today they make it a little more environmentally friendly than it was when I used it, but pro dope is still available by a company called Hercules and all these products here, mega lock real tough, Blue Block is made by a company called Hercules. And um, yeah, that's it. So I will leave uh, links in the description box below for all these products you see here on the counter. And again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments or shoot me an email, info at bobsplumbingvideos.com. And guys, I, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope I've answered any unanswered questions. And I hope to see you again in the future in the next video. Take care. And as I always like to say, Happy plumbing. Hey folks, it's Bob here. If you find these videos helpful, please, please hit that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to claim your free video series, The 7 Things You Shouldn't Have to Pay a Plumber to Do. And to learn more about how to prevent a plumbing disaster in your home, check out my new video course, The No-Brainer Home Plumbing Inspection Checklist. Happy plumbing.